Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about Acalasia. Acalasia is a rare chronic disease of the esophagus that affects the ability of the esophageal muscles to move food and liquid from the throat to the stomach. The disease is caused by damage to the nerves in the esophagus, more specifically the nerves of the Auerbach plexus, which control the peristaltic contractions of the muscles that move food and liquid through the digestive system. The lower esophageal sphincter is essentially not able to relax to let food pass into the stomach. Swallowing is a complex physiological process that involves the coordinated movement of several structures and muscles in the mouth and throat. The process can be divided into three stages. The oral stage, the pharyngeal stage and the esophageal stage. During the oral stage, food is chewed and mixed with saliva to form a bolus, which is then pushed to the back of the mouth by the tongue. When the bolus reaches the pharynx, it triggers the pharyngeal stage. In the pharyngeal stage, the soft palate and uvula rise to close off the nasal passages, preventing food from entering the nose. The larynx elevates and the epiglottis closes off the entrance to the trachea, ensuring that food enters the esophagus and not the lungs. The muscles in the pharynx contract in a coordinated fashion to propel the bolus down towards the esophagus. The upper esophageal sphincter relaxes to allow the bolus to enter the esophagus. In the esophageal stage, the bolus is transported down the esophagus towards the stomach by a wave-like motion known as peristalsis. The lower esophageal sphincter then relaxes to allow the bolus to enter the stomach. The entire process of swallowing is regulated by the central nervous system, specifically the swallowing center in the brainstem. The center coordinates the movement of muscles and the opening and closing of sphincters, ensuring that food and liquid are transported safely from the mouth to the stomach. What are symptoms of achalasia? The primary symptom of achalasia is difficulty swallowing, or dysphagia. This difficulty can be accompanied by a sensation of food getting stuck in the throat, chest pain and heartburn. In some cases, the patient may regurgitate undigested food, which can lead to aspiration pneumonia, a serious condition that can damage the lungs. In some cases, patients with achalasia may also experience symptoms related to the dilation of the esophagus, such as reflux or the sensation of food or liquid coming back up after eating. It is important to note that the symptoms of achalasia can be similar to other conditions, such as gastroesophageal reflux disease, so a thorough evaluation and diagnosis are important. What are causes of achalasia? The exact cause of achalasia is not fully understood, but it is believed to be caused by damage to the nerves of the Auerbach plexus that control the muscles in the esophagus. The damage may be caused by an autoimmune response, which occurs when the body's immune system attacks its own tissues. Other possible causes include viral infections and genetic factors. How can we diagnose achalasia? Diagnosis of achalasia typically involves a combination of medical history, physical examination and diagnostic tests. The first step is usually to ask about the symptoms, dietary habits and family history. We also usually do a physical exam to check for signs of weight loss, malnutrition or dehydration. Several diagnostic tests may be used to confirm a diagnosis of achalasia. These tests include First, esophageal manometry. This test measures the pressure of the esophageal muscles 
as they contract and relax. In achalasia, the pressure of the esophageal muscles is often reduced or absent. The second test we can do is an upper endoscopy. This test involves passing a flexible tube with a camera down the throat to examine the esophagus and stomach. This can help to rule out other conditions that may be causing similar symptoms. The third test is a barium swallow. This test involves drinking a liquid that contains barium, which shows up on X-rays. X-rays are then taken as the liquid moves through the esophagus, showing any abnormalities or blockages. Characteristic in the barium swallow is the so-called bird beak or rat tail sign. It basically shows the narrowing of the most distal portion of the esophagus with dilation of the more proximal esophagus. We can also usually observe a tram track appearance of the esophagus. This means that there is a central longitudinal lucency which is bound by a line of barium on each side resembling tram tracks. In cases where the esophagus becomes atonic or non-contractile, we can also see barium pooling up in the esophagus. This is usually seen in later stages of the disease. The fourth test is a plain X-ray. In a plain X-ray, usually a short segment of less than 3.5 cm in the distal esophagus is involved. We can also see other signs in a plain chest radiograph. We can usually observe a very small or absent gastric bubble and the anterior displacement or bowing of the trachea on a lateral view. The fifth and last test is a high resolution esophageal manometry. This test uses advanced technology to measure pressure in different parts of the esophagus and can provide a more detailed assessment of esophageal function. It is important to note that achalasia can sometimes be difficult to diagnose and other conditions that cause similar symptoms must be ruled out before a diagnosis can be made. How can we classify achalasia? There are three major types of achalasia. The first one is either called type 1 or the classic type. This type is characterized by minimal contractility in the esophageal body. The second type is characterized by a pattern of intermittent periods of panesophageal pressurization. This means that there are times where the esophagus relaxes and times where the entire esophagus tenses up and the pressure rises. The last type is the spastic type. This type is characterized by premature or spastic contractions of the distal esophagus. What are differential diagnoses of achalasia? Basically every disease that presents with dysphagia should be considered as a differential diagnosis for achalasia. Those include first gastroesophageal reflux disease. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is a common condition in which stomach acid flows back into the esophagus, causing heartburn, chest pain and difficulty swallowing. However, unlike achalasia, patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease typically experience improvement in their symptoms with acid-reducing medications. The second differential diagnosis is esophageal spasm. Esophageal spasm is a condition in which the muscles in the esophagus contract abnormally, causing chest pain and difficulty swallowing. However, in contrast to achalasia, patients with esophageal spasm may experience spontaneous relief of symptoms. The third differential diagnosis is eosinophilic esophagitis. Eosinophilic esophagitis is a condition in which the esophagus becomes inflamed due to an allergic response. Symptoms can include difficulty swallowing, chest pain and heartburn. Unlike achalasia, patients with eosinophilic esophagitis may experience food impaction or swallowing difficulties 
with solid foods only. The fourth differential diagnosis is scleroderma. Scleroderma is a connective tissue disorder that can cause skin thickening and scarring, as well as damage to internal organs such as the esophagus. Patients with scleroderma may experience difficulty swallowing on acid reflux, similar to achalasia. And the last differential diagnosis is cancer. Esophageal cancer can cause difficulty swallowing and other symptoms similar to those seen in achalasia. However, this is usually accompanied by other signs such as weight loss, cough or hoarseness, and risk factors for cancer should be considered in the evaluation of a patient with symptoms concerning for achalasia. What is the treatment for achalasia? There is currently no cure for achalasia, but treatment options are available to alleviate symptoms and improve the patient's quality of life. The most common treatments include medications such as calcium channel blockers and nitrates, which can relax the muscles in the esophagus. Also dietary changes are usually recommended. They include to eat slowly, try to drink a lot of water with each meal, and to avoid eating close to bedtime. Another treatment option is endoscopic dilation, in which a small balloon is inflated inside the esophagus to stretch it and help food and liquid pass through. Finally, surgical procedures, such as a heller myotomy, can be performed to cut the muscle fibers in the esophagus, which can improve the movement of food and liquid through the digestive system. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much and hopefully see you again in the next video.